Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, I wanted to provide a few updates. Um, the biggest update is the City of Birmingham's 2022 budget. Um, it was presented to the City Council this morning and to the public. That information is now live on our city's website. Um, you all can obtain a copy of the city's proposed budget at birminghamal.gov slash budget 2022. Um, I am happy to state um, that this budget has made everyone whole. And when I say everyone, I'm defining that in three categories. Um, our employees have made whole, neighborhood revitalization has made whole, and boards and agencies who are our partners in improving the quality of life of our citizens here in Birmingham have been made whole. Related to our employees, the proposed, proposed budget includes not only fully funding our employees' pension, uh, who are our future retirees, uh, but a COLA, cost of living adjustment of 1.5%. In addition to that, merit pay increase as well as longevity pay. Um, I'm also happy to state there is no um, increase in insurance payments for our employees, and so everything they receive is a net positive. In addition to that, related to neighborhood revitalization, um, as we have gotten um, the backlog down for neighborhood revitalization related to blight removal, uh, we continue to be steady with our um, resources towards paving streets. I'm happy to announce that we are investing another $10 million this year in a proposed budget um, to pave streets. And so I think it's a total around $14 million of all the neighborhood revitalization, which includes um, street paving, um, blight removal, um, sidewalks, uh, recycling, as well as um, some other things under the category of neighborhood revitalization, as well as boards and agencies. A lot of our boards and agencies took a hit last year at either being reduced 50% of their funding or 100%. I'm happy to state to you um, that all of them have level funding that's pre-pandemic this year. And so, as stated earlier, this budget is all about making um, our partners who provide city services whole. And I'm happy to report that. Look forward to sharing that information, continuing with the city council as they go about their public meetings. I believe the first one will be June 1st. Um, and it will be online. And so any information you want to send to us, any questions you have around the budget, uh, please ask, ask us. We'll continue to communicate in our various channels, updates um, on detail of the budget. A second note is I'm happy to say that the City Council approved the redevelopment plan for the Palisades. Uh, this is a $23 million capital investment um, which will create new jobs. In addition to that, it will provide new retail opportunities and um, part of it will be a dealership. This dealership will also will be a southeastern attraction as the only Ford Bronco showroom in the region. I have a couple more notes, but I'll pause and see if you all have any questions, and I'll turn it to Rick to open it up. All right, thank you, Mayor. Uh, let's let's go on. John Papke's on the line. John, do you have any questions this, this morning? Well, actually, I got several, actually, um, but, but I'll just start with the budget. Uh, you know, I, I know that And John, the answer is no. Um, for what we have presented to the council, the proposed 2022 budget, um, it does not factor in the American Rescue Plan funding um, that the city is set to receive 50% of that, has been set to receive 50% of that funding. So that funding is not included in our proposed budget. Um, this budget was predicated on our, our usual um, revenues every year, which include our business license, occupational taxes, sales taxes, use taxes as well as um, lodging taxes and permits and fees. Um, actually, because of the number of folks you got on there, go ahead, John, if you got a follow-up question. Okay, yeah, I'm speaking of business licenses. Lester, I don't know if he's on the call as well. He spoke at City Council a while ago when was asked about uh, Valerie Abbott, a, a couple of things. He mentioned that there were $5 million less in business license renewal fees, I guess, in 2021 compared to January of last year. You know, um, the answer is yes, of course. Um, you know, it's not only $5 million down, but it's a 100 business license, yes. 
uh, renewed at the, at the same time pre -pan well pre-pandemic. That being the case, um, as our chief financial officer has stated, um, they're still digging into that data. And so we're hesitant to say why that exists this far. Uh, but there are other revenue streams we are excited about. We believe with um, the continuation of the stimulus money in our economy, um, it's allowed our sales taxes and our use taxes um, to be at a level uh, that's pretty positive and we'll continue to see a positive trend. Uh, we know when the city and the nation opens back up um, related to, um, I guess, fatigue of everyone being on home arrest, um, that there'll be more events, um, more tourism, uh, more sporting events, et cetera, people will be out. And so um, other sales forms of sales taxes will increase in our city as well as lodging taxes. Let me go over to Cody uh, with WBHM. Cody, you've got a question? Um, so there are various boards and agencies that we support for this proposed budget. I believe the actual funding for our boards and agencies is $22,500,000. Um, and so last year it was technically half of that. And so all the organizations pre-pandemic for the um, 2020 budget, for example, if an organization got a million two years ago, they only received 500000 last year this year they'll go back to a million or if they were set to receive whatever they were whatever they got pre-pandemic it's level funding and so I think it will be helpful to them from a programmatic standpoint um, if they are dependent on that money from an operation standpoint as well it'll support the op um, operations of these organizations as well as the programmatic things for these organizations so uh, these organizations not only receive funding from the city, but other streams of revenue that they receive were hurting as well. And so we hope this money puts them in a position that they can continue to provide the services they did pre-pandemic. Uh, let me go over to Sam with Birmingham Watch. Well, Sam, you're on the line. Do you have a follow-up or do you have another question? Yeah. What's up, Sam? Uh, Yeah, some of that's contractual, and some of that is different. Um, different services change. So you mentioned Sam, if you can hear me, what were the examples you gave? BMA is in the Birmingham Museum of Art. Yeah. So the Birmingham Museum of Art is actually not. It's not an external um, boards and agency. It's actually internal. The numbers you see there are based on um, certain employees re um, re through retirement or attrition. Uh, majority of that money is related to personnel. That's not necessarily an external, defined as an external board, an board and agency. I think you used an example of something like, did you say McWayne? Was that another one that you said, Sam? Yeah, McWayne and Rick Wood are the other two. Yeah, so McWayne, um, what you see in McWayne in the budget that was a double payment because we missed a payment, I want to say, in 2019. And so the last two payments, uh, or the payment this, the recommendation this year proposed is their level funding. The, the increased payment you saw was actually a double payment because they did not receive anything for the 2019 fiscal year. So that's actually correct. They're not, they didn't see a decrease, actually. It's just level funding pre-pandemic. Rickwood is just contractual and probably different form of a relationship with the organization, that's all. Any uh, any other questions for me? I know, Papke, I know you said you had another follow-up. Do you have another question? Well, yeah, this is unrelated to the budget. Medical marijuana was uh, signed in law by Governor Ida yesterday. I wanted to get the mayor's thoughts on that and his push to um, decriminalize, I guess, uh, recreational marijuana as well. Yeah, so, um, John, that's a, um, I want to commend the governor. That's a step in the right direction. I believe as a nation, the conversation around uh, marijuana has changed. 
Um, I want to speak to the decriminalization part first. Um, there are many states um, that already provide med medical marijuana, if I'm correct, well over 30. So it's good to see Alabama not be last in something. I think the second note I want to make towards this conversation is um, we're at a point where it's past time to be criminalizing um, the possession of marijuana as a city, as a state, and as a nation. Um, and so pushing this conversation forward, it's good to see the governor and the legislators down in Montgomery participate in a positive trend and positive direction. There are many more miles to go in this conversation, and I'm hoping for the future in the next legislative session and the legislative session after that, we continue to push this conversation, um, particularly around um, something of possession of marijuana not being criminalized and hurting people's opportunity for a second chance and or employment. Um, okay, what, time for one more question. Does anybody else have a question? Well, usually um, when we have mega redevelopment sites like this, um, there's usually an infrastructure package that includes um, streets and lights, et cetera, sidewalks. So I imagine as, as this development grows, and I think it'll be fully online probably by 2023 in between that time, parts of better home, but also just it will be more development. Um, John, keep in mind um, that that's probably one of the most cut up sections related to various cities weaving in and out. So the city of Birmingham is not fully responsible for that stretch. Um, a, a large portion of that stretch um, intersects with the city of Homewood. So in the ideal world, um, we can partner to make sure it's efficient for everybody. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for your time today. Mayor, did you have any other comments you wanted to make? Nope. Just thank you, everybody, and be safe. All right. Have a good day, everybody.